um, I turned up to do this thing and I, I, I was totally, totally overwhelmed. The, the, the cast and the crew were, were unbelievable. Um, but what they wanted me to do was I had four lines talking about um, meeting somebody, but then it was, right, well, we'll see you later. What are you doing? Uh, oh, I'm just going to... I'm just going to hang here because I like watching the, the smiley faces was my line, which was a, a daft reference to a theme park we were supposed to be in. But it was just a direct link to that scene, um, which the, the director said, nobody's going to get but the cast and the crew and me, and that's fine because um, they wanted, um, they had uh, four or five other actors for other um, different Scottish movies. Um, like, but, um, like Dave Anderson, who was Gregory's dad, um, Vince Friel from Restless Natives, right. yeah. and other couple of guys with films like that. So they all had these cameo, uh, cameo roles, and it was just purely for their enjoyment, which was great fun. So how does that how does that go down? When is it good? Is it bad that that you, that you're constantly these characters out of the films? And and you know how often do people come up and, and ask you to play in goal? Or, or, you know, tell me a fact. Uh, it's, no, it's never, there's never a, a football reference. I've right. never um, been uh, asked about football or anything like that. It's, it's, it's usually um, the lines, you know, the when you sneeze it comes out your nose at 100 miles an hour <laughs> and you had the best line. What was that one? Tits bum fanny the lot. That's, that's mostly what I get. And the last time I was down here, um, in May, for, for the, uh, the talk, for that sinking feeling, at the end of it, uh, Daryl said, look, I've got a gift for you, uh, and gave me a t-shirt. And he says, I, and I think you want to hold it up and let everybody see it. So I held it up before I saw it myself. Can I show yeah, you? Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is wholly inappropriate, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I wore it, I, this is the second time I wore it, I wore it to work the next day, it didn't go down well, so I had to keep it, I had to keep it covered, you know, working for a local authority, I could have been arrested or sacked, you know. So, 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 so do you enjoy, it happened in the, in the B&B earlier, is that, is that just something that you roll with now? Or? I, I, I don't mind at all, um, I've been I've been dug up a couple of times. I remember uh, Sani, who was window cleaner, and myself walking along Sucky Hall Street one night, not long after it was out. Um, so it was really fresh in everybody's minds. Yeah. And I remember we get chased in Sucky Hall Street. Well, a minute, not by a bunch of women. I have to say, <laughs> drunken guys. It was always drunken guys. Um, so I can always tell if there's going to be something stupid happening, um, which doesn't happen so much nowadays. But I don't mind at all. Uh, it doesn't annoy me. I think um, I think my, my wife sometimes gets a piss, bit pissed off. Um, my son gets highly embarrassed, but I don't. I really I don't mind, you know. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Certainly uh, talking about anything about uh, that sinking feeling. I prefer that sinking feeling. Uh, I'll I'll talk for hours about that, as, as I have done actually. <laughs> but no, I don't mind at all. I'm quite happy to, to chat to folks. Which I'm going to show another clip of Gregory's going to have. But what I like about this is 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 that there's certain pieces of, of, of film. You know, when you watch a film and you think, you know, that's an iconic moment, like like Casablanca, where you know she gets on the plane at the end, and you you know moments that that you'll always remember in film. And I do honestly think, and I'm not just saying that because you're here, but I do think this next next clip is one of those one of those great cinema moments where everything just seems to come together in it. And, and it's funny and it, it's charming and it zips along. If you get me the lights, Cameron. Um, so tell us a bit about this scene after we've watched it. lost in a row and what do we do? Sack the goalie and put a kid on the forward line. It's a madhouse. Watch the game, Andy. Watch the game. She's good. She can move. It's not right. It's unnatural. 
That's even work nice. It's modern Andy. It's good. Modern girls, modern boys. It's tremendous look. meant to play football. It's too tough. Too physical. Tough? Have you ever seen them playing a hockey? They're like wild animals. Even at 12 and 13, they'd kill you. You know, hockey was invented by the Red Indians. It's a form of torture. They used to make the cowboys play the squaws. Shite, that was lacrosse. And anyway, if women were meant to play football, they'd have their tits somewhere else. They weren't designed for football. Gregory! Watch the ball. Women in this team, more new blood. Yeah, she's some girl. now how do you look at how do you look at them is it like an old school photo is it something <coughs> that you're kind of curious about do you recognize the person on screen uh, well as I was saying uh, earlier on when we did the, the 30th anniversary screening uh, at the GFT it was <coughs> it was Gordon that, that said it first and I didn't really realize what he was talking about but um, it's, it's true what he said actually he was saying he was asked a similar question and what he said was that when he sees it when he watches the film he's not really paying attention to the film what's happening is that um, you're thinking about what's happening off camera you're thinking about what's happening behind the camera because um, a, a lot a lot of laughs went on um, off camera as much as it's on camera, so it's all the stuff you're remembering who was standing just over there, you know, and who was doing what, you know, who was um, who was the assistant director, what he was up to and things like that, because there was loads and loads of stuff going on, you know, uh, and like we were quite often standing behind the camera having a laugh, trying to make time to corpse people, you know, um, which we were told of quite a lot, for, but I think quite often it came across as we were making people laugh, you know. I was very easy to, to corpse. As you can see, I'm, I'm, I've got a cheesy grin on my face for most of the film. So, how did it, did you feel any pressure on the set after doing that sinking feeling, which was incredibly well received at the time, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, um, the only pressure that was on was uh, from the producers, who were uh, Londoners, Davina Belling and Clive Parsons, who produced Breaking Glass, you know, yeah. the, the Hazel, Hazel O'Connor one. Hazel yeah. O'Connor film. And, and I think, I may be wrong about this, but they may have had something to do with Scum as well. Right. Um, right. They were really insistent on the accent being not as broad as it was uh, in, in that sinking feeling. Um, it comes across sometimes with Steve the Cook, because he tries to put on this 
um, sort of posh accent, and doesn't quite carry it off because he hated it. Because they were always on his back about his accent and not being as broad uh, as he, as he is. Um, that was that was the only pressure that was really right. Um, right. And we, to be quite honest, most of us just ignored it. Right. You know. So was it a good was it a good shoot? Was it a good time? Oh, it was a great time. It was magic. I mean, <coughs> as I said earlier on, we were getting paid for you know for having a laugh. You know. Um, and in 1980 we made uh, relatively a fair bit of money. Right. Know? Right. Um, which which helped. Yeah. Yeah, it was a big thing. Um, I, I bought my first synth. I used to be into keyboards and stuff like that. So I walked into a music shop, cash in pocket. I'd like to buy that, please. I son, very good. On you go. <laughs> There's my cash. Can I buy it now? Oh, of course, son. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so I, just able to do things like that, you know. Yeah. Um, it was great fun, you know. I mean, we were able to do. Loads of stuff that we could never do, you know. Um, I had, uh, I had, I had spent a year working in theatre because I had originally trained as a stage manager. So I had worked. It was Dundee Rep was my first job, you know. So after uh, working in Dundee Rep, I got the, 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 the shout for for Gregory's Girl, um, and I kept I kept mixing them, kept doing um, doing a lot of the stage management stuff as well, and a lot of the theatre. Um, but then I got I got a, a London agent, um, so I was able to go back and forth to London and stuff right. like that. Right. So what was Bill Forsyth like to work work for as a director? Great, dead easy. He was he was just a, he was one of us. He was just a pal, you know. Um, the, the the main problem with with uh, Sink Fiona and Gregory's girl and Comfort and Joy as well um, was <coughs> you really had to keep your mouth shut. If you had a suggestion or you found something funny. If you said to him, the chances are it would end up in the film. And there's quite a lot of wee instances like that. Like some of that scene there, um, with the football, yep. um, like all, all the stuff behind the goal, you know, it, it was, a, a lot of it was just, um, the same with the, 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 the on the bridge. Right. The, yep. the, the, the dialogue was just whatever we come up with at the time. Yep. Although that scene was a bit more structured. Um, but what he wanted me to do at the end was he wanted me to ignore the net and try and save the yeah. you know, save the ball, which I, I did clearly. Yeah. Well, and always well, gets a yeah. laugh. Whenever I've seen it with an audience, always gets a huge laugh. Because I think that's the only one you save in the... In the, the that's, that's the only thing you see me in goal. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, yeah, you're right. Can you just hit me the light again, Cameron? Because talking of that, of that um, improvising, we've got to watch this clip again. It may be a little dark, for which I apologise for, but... Um, talking about improvising. Come on, Andy, let's go home. That's not the way you spell Caracas, anyway. What? Caracas is spelled with an A. C A S, not C U S. Why didn't you tell me that before? Could you not have told me that four hours ago? We'd be standing here waiting for you. Come on, we can start again tomorrow. There's some nice girls that come here. They always go for the older guys. At least the nice ones do. There's even a couple of dolls in second gym. The son of the day in the home. Jim and Louise. Andy, I think everything's going to be alright.